Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this keynote talk. Um, uh, this is um, Aydin Sezgin. Uh, I'm a professor at the Ruhr University in, in Bochum in Germany. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank Bruno and uh, Irot and also the organizing team, of course, to uh, give me the chance to give a talk on, on, on this topic. Uh, so this topic is about uh, rate splitting in 5G networks and, and beyond. And we have been doing uh, some work basically with, uh, for some time now, uh, mainly with uh, my PhD students, former PhD students, Anna Shaban, who is now a, a professor uh, uh, at uh, the UBC in, in Canada, um, Sohail Gereklo, who is now with uh, Bosch Research and uh, working on autonomous driving, and Ala Alamir, who is going to defend his thesis in a couple of months. So here's the overview of my talk. I'm going to start by looking at resource management in modern communication networks. Um, I'm going to discuss uh, shortly about the concept of rate splitting and uh, followed by recent results of, of uh, the use of re rate splitting in uh, wireless communications. And then I'm going to uh, introduce uh, basically the deployment of, of uh, rate splitting in, in cloud radio access networks. This is then followed by uh, discussing three applications of uh, basically the concept of rate splitting in cloud, uh, cloud radio access networks. And then I'm going to conclude my talk. Okay, first, uh, consider, let's consider resource management in, in modern communication networks. When considering the data traffic in modern communication networks, we uh, expect that uh, the next generation of, of uh, those networks uh, it has to handle an unprecedented number of, of communication devices. So this is shown in, in this figure here for an, a use case known as Internet of Things, where we have uh, uh, like a massive connectivity um, of, of applications, basically, and we have to deal with this. But the more uh, next generation networks have to deal with a massive increase of, of data traffic, uh, basically, and um, finally also with the heterogeneity of, uh, of application and services, uh, as also illustrated in, in this figure. This figure nicely illustrates the statement that the data traffic is expected to grow significantly. So in 2018, we had 27 8 exabytes per month. And it is expected that uh, this number is going to increase to 136 exabytes per month. So the question is now, how can we address those challenges? So what is needed is that we use cutting edge communication technologies to enable those future communication networks to, to meet their target. Among others, the most promising technologies are software defined networks, SDNs, which are realized basically within the uh, cloud radio access network architecture and massive MIMO basically, which, which enables massive connectivity. So the idea of, of CRUN is illustrated in this figure. So traditionally, base stations were doing all the job basically starting from the RF layer up to the control layer. The idea of CRUN is now to uh, split basically those ta tasks, uh, which is done basically partially by the baseband unit, basically starting from the baseband layer up to the control layer. And the remote radio head is only doing basically the, the RF part. Right? So this is again illustrated in this figure. You can see basically that the basement unit is located in the cloud, which is connected via frontal links to the remote radio heads, basically which are performing the RF part, basically in communicating to the users. The uh, cloud itself is connected via backhaul link to the core network. The idea of massive MIMO is, of course, that you uh, uh, use uh, uh, lots of antennas, basically, such that you are able to support um, a, a lots of users uh, simultaneously. The challenge is, as always, that the resources are limited, and, and therefore we have to come up with sophisticated uh, resource management uh, concepts. There are concepts at the system level, uh, basically considered for 5G and, and beyond. And there are uh, physical layer concepts basically um, co uh, considered for 5G and beyond. So in this presentation, we are going to focus basically on the rate splitting uh, scheme basically and how can we integrate this in future networks uh, as realized by software defined networks. 
Okay, so we, so essentially we have a concept from from the system level perspective and the concept from the physical layer perspective, and we want to understand basically um, how we can utilize them together in order to enable resource management to fulfill the demands of those future uh, networks. So I have mentioned uh, rate splitting a couple of times now, and uh, before we go into the details, let's just discuss about the, the uh, idea of con uh, rate splitting. In order to understand the concept of rate splitting, we need to look at uh, the conventional way how um, resources are managed, or uh, in particular how interference is, is, is treated um, in, in uh, wireless networks. Um, the conventional way essentially in, uh, in wireless networks um, is to treat simply the interference as noise. So this is illustrated in the simple setup here with two base stations. Um, and um, um, each, to each base station there is one user associated so that basically the base station is encoding the message uh, into a code word, sending it via the direct link uh, to the respective user. In case this is done uh, simultaneously, that means the base stations are using the same spectrum at the same time, um, we have interference, meaning that the desired information from the base station one towards the user one is disturbed by the interference signal coming from base station two. And similarly, the desired information from uh, for user one, which is coming from base station two, is interfered by the interference signal coming from base station one. So what is done, uh, what is, uh, done traditionally in, in, in communication network is that this interference is simply treated as noise. So the question is here, is this optimal? Well, it turns out that from an information theory perspective, uh, that this way of dealing with interference, that means treating it simply as noise, is in general suboptimal. A natural question which arises naturally here is, what is then the optimal strategy? In order to answer this question, there have, uh, has been lots of work since the 1980s basically on the uh, capacity of the uh, elemental interference uh, channel, which is actually nothing else than the uh, setup we have just looked at uh, on the previous slide. So it turns out the method which people came up with when in the very early investigations of, uh, of the interference channel was the idea of rate splitting. In fact, rate, uh, rate splitting can be traced back to the early work of, of Kale. Uh, However, uh, Han Kobayashi were the first who introduced the notion of rate splitting and common message decoding. Uh, quite recently, Atkin, Wang, and Se, uh, they showed that a very simple Han Kobayashi scheme achieves to within one bit of the capacity of the interference channel, of the two-use interference channel. However, the capacity of the general interference channel is still unknown. So what is the idea of this um, rate splitting? So in, in this most simple form, basically what's happening is that each base station is splitting its message in two components, the private part and the common part. And uh, then each of those uh, components is um, encoded independently and sent to the users. So in case we have interference, the um, desired signal of uh, the base station 2 is again disturbed by the signal coming from base station 1. However, due to the splitting at the transmitters, each receiver has now the, the freedom to decide whether he wants to decode the, the common message of the other user. So this can be helpful in order to improve the performance. More importantly, it gives the, the system in general more degrees of freedom which can be utilized. Given the success of, uh, of rate splitting in the interference channel, people were thinking to apply it to other networks in wi wireless uh, communication. So for instance, uh, the uh, idea of rate splitting was applied uh, successfully on the capacity analysis of interference channel um, Marge, Yates, and, and Kramer looked at the capacity of different channel with partial transmitter cooperation in, in which uh, rate splitting was used. 
Omri, Hasna, and the Taif, they considered an in, um, uh, interference management scheme uh, in, in which basically the relays were using the cooling forward. Zhu and Wu, they have looked at the uh, Gaussian interference channel with a so-called uh, degraded broadcast channel. And then uh, uh, Shang, Kramer, and Poor, they investigated the capacity region and, this, and, and, and some uh, rate capacity of vector Gaussian interference channel in which phase grade splitting was, was used. In addition to the uh, interference channel, there are also works on, on the relay channel and uh, in particular on the, on the two-way uh, relay channel in which it was uh, shown that rate splitting can help to improve the performance of, of the systems um, significantly. In fact, uh, in, in for interference relay channels, it turned out that using a strategy based on, um, um, on rate splitting can improve the so-called generalized degrees of freedom. Um, in addition uh, to those simple networks, rate splitting was also applied to, to multi-cell uh, uh, wireless networks as, as illustrated here. In fact, Dafrouge and, and Wu uh, looked at uh, joint beamforming and, and common message decoding uh, for such multi-cell uh, networks. Uh, they, uh, uh, in order to simplify the analysis, they essentially uh, fix uh, the, uh, the decoding order and also basically the decoding strategy. And this helped them to in, in reduce uh, the interference in such networks significantly. Shine, uh, G, Lee, and uh, Piatowski uh, also considered rate splitting in order to reduce interference and, uh, and uh, success of interference cancellation at, uh, at the receivers and heterogeneous networks. Uh, Lindblom, Karvides, and Larson, they basically came up with an efficient computation of the parity optimal beamformers for uh, basically the MISO interference channel, in which again successive interference cancellation uh, was applied. And um, also, Tuang, Tam, Nugent, Duang, and, and Pur, they have considered superposition signaling in broadcast interference networks, basically as, a, as another uh, uh, realization of uh, uh, rate splitting. Another line of research has looked at uh, using rate splitting for the broadcast channel in which the transmitter has multiple antennas and the receivers are equipped with, with a single antenna each. In fact, Bruno and his colleagues have shown that in case you have partial CSI uh, available to a transmitter, rate splitting can help you in order to improve the uh, uh, sum rate performance, basically. Um, furthermore, they have shown that, uh, uh, by, uh, that rate splitting essentially generalizes uh, um, other multiple access schemes like um, um, STM and uh, NOMA and outperforms them. Uh, rate splitting was also used in, in non orthogonal unicast and multicast transmission setups, um, and it was shown there that uh, it can be used in order to improve uh, both the spectral and the energy efficiency. For the remainder of this talk, I would like to highlight the views of, of rate splitting in 5G uh, uh, networks and beyond. So we expect that uh, those networks are going to be dense networks, and, and in those networks, traditional uh, orthogonal multiple access schemes like TDMA and CDMA, as already mentioned, are in general suboptimal. So one way in order to improve the performance of wireless network, the idea in, in, in 5G and 6G was to have a den, more dense spatial re, uh, reuse. And this should help basically to improve the performance, however, at the cost of increasing interference. So how can rate splitting help here? Well, one solution to many source dense networks is to use a, a CRAN. Uh, essentially, and uh, by this, you take advantage of, of, of cloud computing. So this is illustrated here in this figure. So the base stations are connected via uh, frontal links to the cloud in which we have the uh, a baseband processing unit or central processor, which does basically the, 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 the management. The advantages of CRAN are multiple. First of all, due to this centralization, you are pulling the resources together and are able to manage them in a better way. Next advantage is that by having this approach, you can save in terms of costs and also energy. 
Next advantage is that uh, you, uh, since uh, the base stations are all connected to the cloud via the, the uh, uh, front halls, you have a better coordination and are able to uh, achieve a better interference management. Last but not least, you are virtualizing basic network function and therefore you are uh, able to allow a more elastic operation of the network. So how can we utilize uh, uh, rate splitting in cloud radio access networks? The, the idea is uh, 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 rather simple. So we take the message which is intended for the corresponding user, we split this in two components in, in the common part and the private part and then each of those components is in, in encoded individually into code words, basically in common code words and private com, uh, code words. And then basically those uh, code words are communicated to the base stations via finite capacity uh, uh, frontal links. Of course, now it's up to us basically to optimize which base station should serve the, the users. Here uh, we have three users with the, with the common and with the private messages. For instance, it could be optimal that this user two is uh, basically served with the common with this common message by this base station and this base station, while the private message is served by this uh, base station. Similarly, can be decided that basically this user is served by uh, this base station for both common and private messages while this user could get his private message from, from uh, this uh, base station and, uh, and his common message from, from this base station. So what we have to answer is basically how do we basically transfer the rate splitting which has been applied in those uh, elemental interference channels to basically those wireless networks which are based on cloud radio access. There are certain challenges we need to address here in, in this uh, setup and I think this uh, makes it uh, especially interesting for future research because in most cases uh, the optimal solution is not known. Um, the first challenge is uh, the determination of the common message sets for each user. Yeah? So which has to be uh, fine with again. This gets especially difficult when the number of users and the number of base stations get uh, quite high. The next challenge is that the frontal links are limited in terms of capacity and within these constraints you have to find the best clusters of base stations to serve a user and also you have to find the cluster to serve for the, the private message and you have to find another cluster of base stations which serves the common message. Another challenge and it's also um, um, interesting uh, and makes the problem very interesting is that uh, uh, the rates which we are dealing with uh, are non-convex. Yeah? So that means the objective and the frontal constraints are both non-convex. For the last part of my talk, I would like to look at uh, applications in which uh, um, uh, uh, rate splitting was used. So one of the aspects we looked at recently was the question how we can maximize the sum rate basically of all users in such a network by basically jointly optimizing the beamforming vectors for each user and uh, basically they optimize the clusters for serving private and common messages per user and of course the allocation of the rates for the private and the common message. Of course this has to be done under certain constraints for instance the, the capacity of the front end links uh, was was uh, limited. Here we assumed wireline uh, frontal links. The base station has, or each individual base station has a maximum transmit power it can use. And of course, we have the clusters basically of base station uh, which, which are serving the private and the common message. The first challenge is the determination uh, on, of the common message sets given by this calligraphic MK. Uh, K is the index for the users. So in the two user case, the procedure would be as follows. We have uh, basically the messages. We split them in, into the, in, individually in, in, in the two components. The common messages shown here and the private messages. The common messages are combined so that we have this common message for both receivers. And, and then uh, those three messages are encoded individually and, uh, and then into code words. And then those code words are by using beamforming design basically um, uh, uh, given by the beamforming vectors basically are sent to the corresponding 
uh, receivers. So the index S12 means that this message is in, uh, decoded at both users, and the, uh, the index 1 means that this is intended for user 1 only, and S2 means that this is intended for um, uh, user 2 only. So the decoding order would be as follows. We first decode the common message, and then we uh, 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 use this decoded uh, signal basically to apply successive interference cancellation and then decode the private message. Does this continue for the three is your case? Well, here we have three messages. Each message is split into three components basically. So one component is, is given here, the second one is given here, then we have another here, one here, and, and then basically the private messages. Okay, so here on the top, we have the uh, uh, common messages which are uh, uh, decoded by all users. Here we have uh, 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 the common messages which are decoded by users 1 and 2, then the common messages which are decoded by user 1 and 3, and then the common messages which are decoded by user 2 and 3. Once we have those messages, we encode them individually, and then by using the corresponding beamforming vectors, we send them to the users. The decoding order is then as follows. We first decode uh, the common message which is intended for all the users and then uh, by using success interference cancellation we cancel the contribution from the, uh, this uh, code word here then continue with the decoding of um, uh, the, uh, the common uh, code word S12 and then apply a successive interference cancellation again, decode S13, and then after this, and, and using successive interference cancellation, we decode the private message. So the private message is in, in the, in the decoded uh, last. So you see that this can get arbitrarily uh, complicated. So one approach basically to address this, this challenge is to design this common message set solely based on the uh, channel state information as a transmitter. So this has the advantage that the number of streams is, is linear with k, um, and that the number of common message streams to be decoded each user is, is uh, each user is now a design parameter. So that means basically the optimization is then performed for the given common message set. So another issue is that we have to deal with discrete variables. So if you consider the set of users which are served with the private message by a, a specific base station N, and also like the set of users which are served by uh, uh, with the common message by the base station N, then you see that we have to deal here with a discrete set of variables. And of course, it has an impact on the beam vectors. Yeah? For instance, uh, we, uh, we, if, if basically a, a certain user is not served by a specific base station, then the energy um, is equal to zero. And in this case, we have defined an indicator function, which basically is reflecting this, uh, which is also uh, discrete. Yeah. So how did we solve this issue? So first of all, you need to observe that this indicator function is nothing else than the L0 norm of the energy of, um, of this beamformer. So the issue now here is that this L0 norm is, is not convex and not smooth. However, we, what we can do is we can approximate uh, this L0 norm by the arcos tangents. So in, in this case, basically, then this function is, is concave and, 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 and the smooth function, and therefore we can use this in the, in the, opt, uh, in the optimization uh, as an approximation for the L0 norm. Yet another big challenge is that we have to deal with the non-convexity of the feasible set. So, and this is illustrated here. So, what was our approach here? We have used a so-called inner convex uh, approximation in which basically you uh, uh, come up with a, a convex inner set and then optimize basically with respect to this inner set. Once you have found a solution within this first iteration, you generate another feasible inner set and optimize within this new set. And then you iterate um, over and over again until basically you uh, uh, get the uh, uh, um, optimal solution. In order to illustrate the gains, we applied our approach to a, a seven cell system as shown here. 
We assume that uh, the base stations are equipped with four antennas. We have 28 users. The maximum power we have is 30 dB. And then we have used this pass loss model. So what is shown here is um, uh, the achievable sum rate uh, in a megabit per second um, um, as a function of the number of users. And what we do is we compare basically treating interference as, as noise, uh, basically so, uh, uh, the conventional way, and compare this basically with, with the rate splitting approach. As you can see, uh, the, uh, that as the number of users increase and the interference is, is getting higher, the uh, the, the gap between the, the uh, performance of, uh, of TIN and rate splitting increases. Uh, so showing that it's quite beneficial to apply rate splitting. Another problem we have to, uh, looked at recently was the minimization of the uh, overall transmit power across such a network. So given the constraints and the variables, it turned out that Basically, when you look at the transmit power, you need as a as a function of the of the minimum quality of service per user in megabit per second. That as the number of user increases, uh, basically the performance of rate splitting over tin is getting um, better and better. More interestingly, if you look at the minimum quality of service re rate requirements per user k, um, then um, and then consider the feasibility by applying TIN compared to the feasibility of applying um, rate splitting, you see that as long as this rate is small, the feasibility level is comparable. However, as the rate increases, you see that the feasibility level of rate splitting is significantly higher than the feasibility of using TIN. Another aspect which is worthwhile to look at is, of course, uh, how can we improve the energy efficiency in such systems using rate splitting? Yeah. As you know, maximizing the energy efficiency is quite uh, essential for modern communication systems. Yeah. And then the goal is then, of course, that we want to keep the power consumption somehow manageable while we want to support this massive connectivity and, and those dense networks. So what we are looking at essentially is then a multi-objective programming optimization problem where the energy efficiency is defined as a ratio of the data rate uh, over the power consumption. So what you want to do is you want to maximize the energy efficiency by jointly optimizing the powers and also the rate allocations under certain constraints. Here we have some results showing basically the benefit of rate splitting compared to TIN. So on the y-axis, we have the energy efficiency. On the x-axis, we have the frontal capacity. So here on the bottom, we have the, the uh, solution uh, with a sub-optimal strategy based on successive convex approxi approximations using TIN. And this is what we get by uh, doing a global optimal solution like with a, a TIN. And now if you apply uh, a, a rate splitting instead of of TIN, you get with the uh, suboptimal result this performance curve, and with the global optimal approach, basically you are getting this performance, which is quite significant if you compare this with the rate splitting approach. So this um, actually concludes my talk. I hope you enjoyed my talk, and um, I'm um, happy to receive your questions and, and looking forward to answer them.